Hello from Rock Science. Today I'm going to do a couple of small edits and tweaks to a mix I'm working on in Pro Tools, and you can look over my shoulder. I hope it's helpful. This is Rock Science, my home studio in Newport, Rhode Island. Over the years I've been in music and technology, I've seen the tools modernize and digitize, and played a part in that evolution during my nine years at Cakewalk. Today, Rock Science exists for art's sake only. It's where I practice my craft and get to work on really cool projects. So what I've got here is an instrumental mix that I'm working on. There's a middle section here that transitions from a synthesizer, arpeggiator type thing into another section with piano and acoustic guitar. And I'm going to work on that little transition and try to make it a little more dynamic. So there's the synthesizer going away. And then here's this section with this lovely Yamaha Electric Grand sample from the Addictive Keys plugin, which I love. And here's acoustic guitars coming in and some drums. And it's these acoustic guitars that I want to work on. They're a little dull, a little boring. Uh, we're going to try to do something about that and make this transition a little bit more uh, dynamic, I hope. So. The first thing I want to do is uh, just plain make them louder. And as you can see here, both of these tracks uh, step up in volume as, as that section builds. It's probably uh, pretty good level changes the way it is. I just want it overall louder. There's a couple of ways I could do that. I could just edit the clip gain. Uh, that's one way. I do that sometimes. In this case, since there's not very many automation points, I'm just going to edit the automation itself. I'm going to take the existing curve and move it up and just show you how that's done. The way you do it is you just do a time selection over all of the nodes in the entire envelope. Now if I do that, if I just move it, you can see it's doing the wrong thing. It's, it anchored the automation to the end of this time selection and did this nasty slope at the end. That is absolutely not what I want. Uh, fortunately, there is a keyboard modifier to control this behavior. Um, so on Windows, if you hold the Alt key down, uh, now move it, and you can see it moves all the points up without having any anchor points added in. So I can, I can move it up like that. Okay, I'm going to undo that because that's way too much. Now, I think that I want like 3 dB as a starting point of a, of a change in this thing. One powerful thing about this envelope editing tool here, and, and most DAWs have something like this, is that when you're changing it, you can see this tool tip pops up. And that is showing you the level of the node underneath your mouse. It's also showing you the delta, in other words, the change, the little triangle symbol there. Um, so you can see I've changed it by 2.9. It can be a little tricky to do really fine edits uh, when your track lane is so short. Uh, I happened to get lucky that time and get it right to about 3 dB of a change, uh, but I want to show you another trick. So I'm going to undo that, and now if we hold the Alt key again, but after pressing the Alt key, if I press the Control key, now you get this really fine control. So you can see the mouse is moving way up above the lane, but I'm only changing this you know, 2 dB so far. So now I can really get to 3.0 dB and drop it. So there's that change. I've made that whole curve of volume changes uh, go up by three decibels. Um, and that's, that's great. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other track. Uh, hold the Alt key, click, press the Control key, move it up. So let's see where we are now with this. Okay, well, it's louder. Uh, that's good. Uh, but the tonality of it is still a little flat, still a little boring. Um, we can solo these out. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over to the mix view and we're going to put a plug in on it and uh, give this thing some life. So I'm over on the mix screen now, which I tend to keep on my right hand monitor. I've got the same two tracks soloed and selected. Uh, and there they are, a little dull, a little boring, but louder. Uh, so 
I'm going to open up the Waves SSL channel strip plugin. Uh, we'll deal with these one at a time. I have both the E and the G channel. I think they sound pretty good. The only downside of them, the uh, EQ curve does not translate to the little EQ graph display in Pro Tools. That's okay. I hope that gets addressed someday. That's a, kind of a nice thing. You can see the other tracks here have EQ curves. That's because I'm using the, uh, the Avid plugin. Um, so we'll see what happens in the future with that. No matter. So what we'll do is we'll listen to these one at a time. Here's the left one. And I'm just going to dial up some top end on this. So there's about 6 dB at uh, shelving around 8K. Um, the nice thing about these SSL plugins and, and you know what everyone seems to be saying about them is that you can really push, you can really twist the knobs off on these things and they don't get harsh. The EQ sounds very natural, very real. The bottom end on this guitar track is, is pretty good. It doesn't have a strong resonance or boominess or rumble or anything like that. So I'm just going to leave the rest of the, of the bands alone for now. Uh, what I am going to do is put a little bit of uh, compression on it. So maybe a little more than a little. So we'll just start dialing up the ratio. We'll get up to like, uh, I don't know, three, three plus a little bit. So you can see I'm getting about 10 dB of gain reduction from it. Notice the, the Waves plugin really uh, it pretty nicely does its own makeup gain, you know, organically. It just, it just happens, so you can kind of twist the knobs until it sounds good without worrying about constantly adjusting makeup gain. It does a pretty good job at it. I've got the attack speed set for the fast speed on this. Uh, in this case, I really want this to be a fast compressor, almost like an electric guitar or stomp box compressor, very fast because these are going to sit kind of back in the mix and I just want the dynamics really, really controlled and just right, very thin range. I think that sounds pretty good. I think that's about what I want. So let's work on the other one. I'll solo that one and solo this one. I'll open up the other instance and... Okay, so this one is very dull. <laughs> so we're going to do the same, definitely going to add uh, some top end to it at around 8K like I did on the other one. But this one's probably going to need more stuff going on. So yeah, I think down here around uh, 250 or so, I'm going to just suck a little bit out of the body resonance. And there's also a little bit of low-end rumble on this thing that I'm going to just take down with um, a low shelf here. Take a few dB down on that. Take a little bit of that rumble. I may even move this up a little higher, up into the 80s. Yeah, okay, good. So now let's do the same dynamics. So we'll do some compression, maybe a little harder compression on this one. Okay, so you notice that's kind of breathing a little bit um, more than I would like. And the reason is because by default, this compressor is before the EQ. You know, you kind of think left to right, but it's a little counterintuitive. The compressor's on the right. And since I'm cutting all this low frequency rumble, um, I want to put the compressor after the EQ because I'm cutting out stuff that's not going to be there. I don't want the detector or the compressor getting tricked by it. So, so I'm going to do uh, channel out, hit the channel out switch. That that moves the dynamics to the uh, channel output. So, in other words, after the e, the long-winded way of saying it's after the EQ. Um, so, so that's much nicer. Much less of that, you know, big breathing thing that it was doing. Yeah, so that's nice. Let's listen to them together soloed. There's with both of them bypassed.
both of them in. Oh, I like that quite a lot. So let's listen to the whole thing, if we can here. I'll just rewind a few. And we will unsolo everything and roll. Much better. Even with the drums coming in, the guitar sit up there. I still hear my little electronic percussion stuff going. Awesome. So even with that distorted electric guitar and the drums and the bass there, the, the guitars just stay on top of the mix, uh, nice and wide and bright and jingly jangly. That's exactly what I want. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if it was, I know everybody says this, but uh, give me the thumbs up thing, uh, like, and uh, subscribe. Why not? I'm going to put some more of these on. I'm going to try to keep them short, keep them helpful, I hope. And uh, please leave comments if there's any questions or if there's anything else you want me to uh, do and let you look over the shoulder. So thanks for your valuable time. We'll see you next time.